about to recap the Vision keynote where Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella shared what's next. The veteran tech journalist Mary Jo Foley and Paul Thorat are standing by to cover the highlights. Standing by. Coming up, we'll be live streaming the tech keynote with Scott Guthrie. Want to watch Rajesh's tech keynote? Have a question you want answered uh, or have the developer executives answer? Or if you just want to geek out with the latest tech with me, you can do all of that and more at aka.ms, front slash Microsoft Build Live. I want all of your questions. Plus, you can tweet at us throughout the show using the hashtag MSBuild. Now, here to recap the keynote are technology journalists Mary Jo Foley and Paul Thorat. But first, I think we have a little something to show. Oh, wait, no. I forgot. We actually are streaming this around the world, and I have with me on these two lovely screens people all the way from Bangalore, India. So let's cut to them so they can, we can say hi, and then we'll get them to wait for us. Oh, we're in Canada first. This is Canada. Wait for us in Canada. Is this Can India? Oh, yeah. Let's wave everyone to India. Very good. No, actually, this is Canada. I think you got them backwards. Yes, this is Canada. Okay, so there's India. So everyone wave to us, wave to us in India if you can. They can wave, but uh, there you they, I don't think they can hear me. That's okay. It's probably better for them. All right, let's go to Canada over here. Canada, let's wave everybody in Canada. Can you see us? Yes. Oh, there you go. There's the waving. Well, uh, that's pretty amazing. Like I said, if you're watching online, I want you to ask us the questions. Because I can sit here and ask questions all day and say tons of things all day, but I really want you to participate. So make sure you ask the questions so that we can answer everything that you have. We'll have a lot. We have a lot of stuff coverage to cover today and tomorrow and the next day. We're so excited that you're here with us. Thank you for joining us. Sure. All right, come on up. All right, so it looks like they're coming on stage, and we're going to be talking to them sec uh, in a second. But I, I wrote down some notes myself. Excellent. <laughs> so uh, did, you, did you write anything down? I mean, you do that for a living, right? Yeah, I wrote like four or five words. <laughs> <laughs> four or five words? They're mental notes. Mental notes. Mental notes. Paul, how are you doing, buddy? Doing pretty good. Fantastic. Well, it's good to have you. I mean, I like talking... Mostly to Mary. I mean, yeah. you'll marry Joe. And, and I get that a lot. Yeah, I, I've heard. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I'm excited to hear what you think about, because Satya went through a lot of stuff. He did. Uh, and I kind of summarized it into what I thought. But again, it doesn't matter what I think, <laughs> because I am not a veteran tech journalist. We have Mary Jo Foley and Paul Thorat. How are you doing? Sure. Very good. All right, so let's start with you, Mary Jo. What are some things, three key things that stood out to you when you were watching? So I was really interested in the whole focus around collaboration. That kept coming up over and over. And I think some of the things we saw with Fluid Framework and Teams and, and some of the messaging demos really kept hitting home that that is a big focus for Microsoft and they want it to be a big focus for developers. What do you think, Paul? Well, three things or yeah. just one thing? I, I, one, one. One, one. I'm one, trying one. to make it so everyone can participate. Okay, <laughs> Paul, I, I mean, I know. <laughs> well, there's a lot of things. Yeah. So I, uh, to get it out of the way, because I know it's not a huge focus for Mary Jo, I would say the gaming thing was uh -huh. very interesting to me. The notion that Microsoft has three clouds that are Microsoft 365, Azure, and gaming. Oh, it's right? true. Very high level. We recently released, a re like I saw them release a thing, and I was like, wow, this is actually really nice. Yeah. I'm pretty excited. So about collaboration, what struck you the most? Like, for example, one of the things that I found working at Microsoft is that a lot of times it's like all my meetings are virtual now, and I'm like, I'll just... Right. I'll just stay home. Right. Yeah, why are we here? <laughs> well, we wanted to see your beautiful face. So. Aww. Go ahead, Mary. Yeah, I, th I think some of the things they were showing about the meeting of the future stuff, talking about that microphone array mm -hmm. that we saw last build, and it was kind of like a mystery device. Uh -huh. But now we know that's going to become a developer kit that people can build uh, around when they're doing collaborative meetings, thinking about future of teams, and making meetings easier to set up easier to participate in. Um, I think all those things are something everybody can relate to. And that device was really cool, but it then was. I, I kind of side noticed, did you notice this, that they're like, we could just use our camera and our microphone and right. sync them all together, so is the device... Do you even need it? Yeah, yeah. what did you think, Paul? Device smash. I, 
from my collaboration standpoint, to me, it's the project, the fluid uh, framework mm -hmm. uh, stuff that I thought was interesting. Mary Jo referred yeah. to it as Olay for the cloud or Olay for the Holy web. Holy cow, that's old school. Remember right? Olay? I, I remember looking at it as a youngster and thinking, this sounds really fun. Right. But the it compound wasn't. documents, <laughs> yeah. et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, I, I think there's a rich history at Microsoft where a feature takes off somewhere and they say, you know, we need to formalize this and bring it out to a wider platform. You know, Xbox Live. A lot of the uh, multiplayer stuff started with Halo, for example. And right. I think with this, what you're seeing is we have real-time collaboration in Office 365. Hmm. Where else w might we put that? We should use it elsewhere. Yeah. Um, yes. And I, I'm, I'm pretty excited about the new Office because, like I said, I literally my drive home as I get up and then walk downstairs, and they're like, oh, you're home so soon. <laughs> 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 maybe, maybe I should take the hint. Thanks, Microsoft. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Friends. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to talk about, because this kind of was infused all throughout, and I want to get your take on it, is the notion of AI in the workplace, AI, you know, in the shop, AI everywhere. What were your thoughts on that, Paul, that you saw? Well, A, that it's inevitable, yeah. and B, that Microsoft, uh, thankfully, has an ethical view of AI and a productivity focus, and I think that's where it's going to make the most impact anyway, right? Because I think today, a lot of the ways in which individuals interact with AI is through personal technology, whether it's Google or on something on their phone or whatever. And there's always that question, mm -hmm. the creepiness factor. You know? yeah. And I think the Microsoft's approach to it is uh, more ethical, of course, but it's also more where I think AI will make the biggest difference in productivity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mary Jo? So if you said to me, what was the biggest demo today and the one that I thought was most interesting, it was around virtual assistants. And I feel like you know, we've got Cortana, there are other virtual assistants, Microsoft has this virtual assistant solution accelerator, but that turn-by-turn -turn demo that they did towards the end, it, because now Microsoft is integrating the semantic machines technology, I feel like finally it feels like virtual assistants are becoming true assistants. Right. So for me, that of all the AI pieces, I think that's the most interesting and the most real-world applicable. And it, didn't it feel like early on with this technology, it was like more gimmicky than productivity? Yeah. I made totally. that, that. That was on purpose, everybody. Very nice. Good. Thank you. It, <laughs> was there like a shift where all of a sudden you're like, because my wife uses the thing all the time. It's like, hey, remind me to right. blah, blah, blah. And mm -hmm. I, I don't do that. I might be You know, what the, the, the shift is conversations. The, yeah. the shift is when you're not fighting it. When The shift is when you're not always saying, no, I mean this, or no, I want that version of the song, or whatever it is you're asking for, you know? When you stop, it's a Turing test. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah basically. When you stop realizing that you're given spoken word commands like an Infocom game from the past or something, I have to meet a very strict set of rules, and you can just talk naturally, I think that's where it shifts. Awesome. OK, any other insights or things? Because I, like, I feel like I drove the first part, and I want, because you know I'm, I love AI. <laughs> right, right. I just wanted to land. By the way, there. didn't share the questions with us. No, we're doing this like that. on the fly here. But, yeah, everything's you know. on the fly. That's the way it works, right? So tell us about, about what you thought was most impactful for you. I know you started well, to tell us. Well, for me personally, I, like I said, there were, I had more than three okay, things that really struck Let's get to up. them. I want to get them all out. We're like yeah. a therapist. <laughs> now, right? uh, we talked about the fluid framework. Um, the biggest thing for me personally was actually the Microsoft Edge stuff mm -hmm. and the three components that Microsoft discussed today that they're adding to the browser, especially the privacy stuff, which I think is huge. You know, we know that Microsoft is taking out a bunch of Google tracking, but today what they described was what they're going to do about third-party tracking, which is just a general browser problem. And I think that that type of thing is what's going to drive users to this browser. I see. And it's, I, I think it's amazing. Obviously, IE compatibility is important for enterprise. Um, and then just the fact that they're working with the standards-based browser in general and now bringing it forward as, uh, to all platforms in a way that is safe, secure, and private, I think is humongous. I'll be honest. I personally use I do a new one already. Are you using Credge? We are, too. I, I Credge. Is that what we're calling no, it? No, it's not. No, it absolutely is not what we're calling it. Stop it trying that. to make credit a thing. <laughs> it's a thing. It's, it, yeah. But I download it and I, like, all my stuff just work, you know, and right away I was like... The, the reason that's interesting is, you know, I test browsers regularly. Every time sure. a new version of Brave or Firefox or whatever comes out, I always try it. And I always find myself going back to Chrome in the past. And new versions of Edge would come out with each version of Windows 10. And they were always, they were always better. There were improvements, but I always made my way back to Chrome. It's very interesting to me 
that this browser has stuck because that's never happened to me. I'm, I'm already using it. I only use it yeah. on new installs. I don't bother to even put Chrome on there. I, and, I mean, I had to put Chrome on there because I need to test the stuff that I build mm -hmm. everywhere, right? And there's sure. frameworks that I use. But now I'm strictly yeah. on edge. It's amazing. You're on, on edge. edge. <laughs> so, that was on edge. plan too. <laughs> Uh, what did you think of the of the Edge stuff? Yeah, I'm super interested in it too because, like Paul, I've always been using Chrome on Windows 10, wherever. And on my Surface Go, I had a real problem with Edge because it's a lower powered device, sure. and I live in TweetDeck pretty much. Yeah, and it just didn't work with the old Edge. Uh -huh. But Credge, now I, I am incredulous. <laughs> she's she's We're just going to single handedly credge drive forever. forever. We I'm incredulous. Credge in there. That, that's cool. So. Any other things that stood out? Like there was a lot of AI stuff that was yep. infused all mm -hmm. the way throughout. What did you think of the speech and live transcription stuff and the translation Q and A? Is that something that you see is useful? Are we doing AI the right way? <laughs> like, I mean, I feel like. I mean, that's no brainer. Yeah. Yeah. No brainer. Yeah. Awesome. I think the the whole cognitive services model actually, once you understand what that is, it makes a lot of sense, yeah. right? Because if you figure out that oh, these are just a bunch of APIs Microsoft built. And I can just put them in my app and start doing AI without having to become a data scientist. Right. I can suddenly actually do AI. And what's cool is like, and I, I, told, I told you this, like you can basically download the containers now. And, and I, I think this is funny. It's like lift and shift down now where you take the containers and run those AP, same APIs on your, on right. your local box. Right, container at the edge, Yeah, right? absolutely. Yep. So as I'm looking through this, I. Tell me more about the Fluid Framework, because you mentioned it a couple of times, but why was it something that you're like, wow, this is actually super interesting? We'll start with you, Mary Jo. So I'm old enough that I remember Olay <laughs> and Compound Documents. And yep. the, the goal was when someone's working in one document with a table or some element, what if somebody else is doing it, the same document with the same table, and they're not syncing up? Oh, yeah. Right? And so the promise that that actually could work across the web right. across different browsers. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, I mean, because like generally when you, the way we used, we used to type it up and then email and the copies mm -hmm. of these things would live right. everywhere. Yeah. And hopefully the promise of, of the fluid framework as you're telling me is to be able to do real collaboration across browsers. That's what it sounds like. Um, there's, a, there's a document object model part of it and then there's also the web canvas idea that we're all working in, in a web world now and inside of a browser instead of looking at I'm in Word. You know, I'm in Word, but I'm on the web. Yeah. Right. And I, I like that. Like I like th this is I'm not super old, right? But I started to do the O365 like document collaboration yeah. online. And that sounds pretty cool. It is. Yeah. And and I, I'm a little ashamed, right? Because I work there <laughs> and I'm just barely like, oh this is really nice. I'm so excited. <laughs> what did you think about the fluid framework? I keep going, you know, it's almost 25 years ago since Windows 95. Microsoft today is solving some of the same problems it was solving then, but it's doing it at a scale that is so much more vast. So this notion of uh, people being at the center of things is really the document centricity thing. You don't think of an app, you think of the, the thing you're working on and the compound documents right. that you mentioned, this notion that you could be in Word, there's a spreadsheet inside of it, now you're in Excel, and it doesn't really matter what your app you're in. But now we're exploding that out beyond Windows to every Anything. platform essentially, right? Mobile and web as well. And uh, across uh, a, collection of, a collection of all, we'll call it all apps essentially. And I, it's just astonishing. Mm -hmm. it, so I want to finish up with this, this notion of, and I wanted to see what you did, because I, I wrote it down. I was like, they said the words conversational canvas or something right. to that effect. Yeah. I may have written it wrong down, but like I had a thought. I'm like, this is kind of an interesting perspective. What did you think of the whole notion of a conversational canvas? What do you think that means? Right. So to me, that means more almost like a conversational engine that'll be common across all the different virtual assistants, I right? See. So. Right now, the, the focus has been on Cortana and how do we make Cortana more of a productivity aid instead of a, just a pure standalone digital assistant and a speaker, right? But if you take that to the next level and say, what if you could take the engine at the heart of Cortana and other virtual assistants and actually imbue that with some intelligence? Right. That makes AI assistants kind of live up to the original promise, which right. was they will right. be your personal assistant. Yeah, what did you think, Paul? I think it's 
almost a combination of a couple of things we've already talked about. This notion of conversations being the key just to assistance in general. And then this explosion of content across app borders um, combined together into a, you know, it, this is the UI now. This is the UI is not really the right word, but it's the way we interact. That's how, that's how I thought about it. I, yeah. This is like the new window. Right. Yeah. Like remember when the window first came out? And you're yeah. like, weird. Right. Now right. everyone has a window on every yeah. operating system. Yeah. And I feel like it. Like I like your analogy there mm -hmm. that you have. Right. And and if you look at what Microsoft has done over the past few years in really opening up the company and its technologies, literally and you know, uh, figuratively, th this is what needs to happen for a conversational canvas to become a reality. Awesome, so we're almost done. So 10 seconds, Kite, if you were to tell someone you should go look at Foo or Bar, what would it be for you, Mary Jo? Here at Build. Here at um, Build, or just if they're watching online, what is the technology you're like, you should go look at? Oh boy. Um, wow. Um, Maybe we should start with Paul, so you can have yeah. about it. Paul, what'd you think? There's a lot of stuff going on at Build that we haven't heard from the Vision Keynote. Right. .NET Core 5 is happening. Right. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of other stuff going on. There are two more keynotes, so we know a little bit about some of the stuff that's happening, but. Um, there was exciting stuff here. There's a lot more, a lot more at the show. Ooh, stay tuned, man. That was a good <laughs> You, you ma'am. And you know what? I, I feel like it, it's just starting to percolate into the build conversations about the power platform. Okay. Um, because traditionally that hasn't been a topic at build. It's been at other shows like Ignite. Mm -hmm. But the whole idea of Flow and Power BI um, and how you can start integrating those in with other kinds of apps, Office 365, Dynamics, and third-party apps, I think that's really key. Also, awesome. we, yes, we, we have to be very clear, we're not calling it Credge. Okay. <laughs> I am. All right, well, the Credge team are pretty excited. I'm mean, sorry, the Edge team are very excited about this new name. Awesome. Okay, so looks like we have, thank you so much, Mary Jo and thank Paul, Paul Thorat. That's very nice of you to